Amen. Amen. I want to uh, welcome you all here today and a reminder that if you are not up, you probably want to mute yourself so that if you decide you're going to make noise, the rest of us don't hear it. Um, this week's session met on Monday and made a couple of decisions that you probably ought to know about. One of them is that we are going to continue with online worship, online meetings, online everything for the foreseeable future. Uh, the, the comments that we, the suggestions we had all ended by saying, and anyone over the age of 60 or with pre-existing conditions should continue to stay at home. And we looked at that and thought, well, that pretty much covers most of our congregation. So we are, yes, we all want to be back together. We want to be back in the sanctuary, but we also want to be safe. So we will be continuing with the online worship for the, for the near future, at least. There was some confusion this week as to what all was canceled as far as on uh, as in person meetings go and i will say the answer is everything everything is canceled so yes lincoln league is canceled until you hear something different it, everything is canceled the stewardship letters will be sent out this week so you can um, you can look for those and the session also decided that it would be good if at this time when the food bank that just until a couple months ago was located in the church <clears throat> and is now next door, the Equality Toledo Food Bank, they're seeing a lot more need than they normally do. And so we're going to try to support them. And you'll be hearing more about that in the coming days and weeks. Are there other announcements that any of you know? that okay i have an update on anthony oh thank you <clears throat> um i spoke to him on thursday i believe and he is finishing his um let's see he had finished his radiation and he had one more round of chemo that he was completing this week and then he is supposedly done for now um he said that the tumor has been shrinking um, so I believe he has, that's what's on his uh, vocal cords that's causing that. Um, and he was in a very positive mood and he, um, he was feeling good about it. So uh, he's doing well. Excellent, thank you. Thank you, any other announcements? All right, then let us move to the call to worship which is a video that was produced by another church. <clears throat> For a call to worship, please join in the refrain. God is here. No matter where we are, may we know God is near because God is here. In our homes or in the hospital, 
in our neighborhood streets and grocery store aisles. May God's presence surprise us because God is here. When we stay home in sweatpants all day, anxious to get back to normal, but afraid of what that will be, may God's presence comfort us because God is here. When we work and are faced with new challenges or the same struggles made even more complicated, it's heartbreaking. May God's love empower us because God is here. When we just can't take any more, may God's presence give us just one deep breath. When we catch a glimpse of a holy fire, may we fall to our knees because God is here. Amen. Mary, will you start us on the call to confession? Day by day, God wants to lead us to the places of hope and healing, while moment by moment, we continue to follow sin down all the wrong paths. Let us confess our lives as we draw near to the one who wants to restore us to wholeness. Join me as we pray together the corporate prayer of confession saying, Lord of our lives, gate of salvation, you know how easy it is to follow the wrong path. We make the foolish choice to listen to irresponsible rhetoric instead of the wisest among us. We would rather stir the waters of trouble than to stay at home. Forgive us, God of goodness and mercy. May our hearts overflow with hope for others so others might be anointed with healing oil of grace. May we follow Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, to the places of service and life with you forever even if only from the interiors of our homes. 
Our comforter leads us to the place where God's table is spread with forgiveness and overflowing with grace. Here we are called to life and to love. We will live as God's people, forgiven to serve, blessed to share, loved so we might care. Thanks be to God. And our response is, I will sing and then you will repeat after me. Glory to God, glory to God, glory in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God, glory in the highest. To God be glory forever. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Amen. Now is the time for the passing of the peace, so you can unmute yourself, wave, smile. Peace of Christ be with you. And also with, and also with you. you. And Peace. also with y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. 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 Peace Justin, of Christ. Justin, do you have any more of those rolls? Any more of those rolls? We got some uh, cinnamon toast. We got some toast. If you want to reach through the screen and you can grab it. <laughs> yeah, just hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Looks good. <laughs> And if you came in late and didn't get the news, we're going to celebrate communion later. So you might oh, want to yeah. run yeah. out and, and save some of that cinnamon toast for them. There you go. Yeah, there we'll you have, go. We'll do that. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. Hi there, Charlotte. Well, hey, Michael. Hi, Michael. Mm -hmm. Hi, David. Dennis. Hey, Mike. Diane. So good to bring us through and see all the people. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. I see. All right, let's move on to our first scripture reading. You can mute yourselves back again. Mary, it's all yours. Our first scripture this morning is from Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Amen. It's wonderful to hear the choir. Our second scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of John, the 10th chapter, verses 1 through 10. <clears throat> Jesus is speaking. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, <clears throat> but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of, the, of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? O Lord, our God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight. You who are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This week, I learned a little bit of history that I had not known before. This is ancient history. It seems there was an insurrection in Israel under Herod Archelaus between 4 BCE and 6 CE. So in the 9, 10 years surrounding Jesus' birth. And the leader of that insurrection was a man named Athronges. Athronges the shepherd. And Athronges was aided by his four brothers, and all five of them, of these men, were exceptionally tall and strong. But Athronges, the shepherd, was not a good shepherd for the people. Contemporary reports told of the brothers setting up groups of people to attack each other, uh, attack each other as well as slaying many themselves. Some of some out of the hope of gain, the report says, and others from a mere custom of slaying men. So when Jesus said, all who came before me are thieves and bandits, he may well have been thinking of Athronges the shepherd. Because Athronges may have set himself up as the shepherd of the people, but he was not the true shepherd. He was not the gate for the sheep, the person who protected his sheep by laying his body down for them. And this picture, I know it looks a little bit like a bunch of peanuts at, the, at first glance, but those are really sheep. And uh, you can see where the guy's sitting. That, that was the doorway to the, uh, to the sheepfold, but there was no door on it. The only, the only door was the actual shepherd. So at night, the shepherd would lie down in front of that so the sheep couldn't get past and during the day, the shepherd was there to kind of monitor and make sure they, they were behaving. <clears throat> Jesus was a good shepherd, the true shepherd. He was the one who came so that the sheep, which would be us, would have life, abundant life. Now, abundant life here doesn't mean what the prosperity gospel says it means. The prosperity gospel is a recent kind of strange understanding of Christianity that says God wants all of God's people to be rich. And if they'll just send in money to support their church or their pastor, God will bless them financially. Uh, you can find this on TV, various places. If you run into it, go the other way. Financial abundance is not what Jesus was talking about. He meant that he came so we might have life, not just existing, but living, living fully, cup runneth over life, and have it abundantly now, 
not not just after we die when we get to heaven, but now our lives would be filled with goodness now. Now, I have to say that during this time of COVID-19, it, it's a little hard sometimes to feel like we are living abundant lives because we're afraid a lot. Many of our leaders seem more interested in their own power than in doing what's right for the country. They're not working together, but are out for their own good or the benefit of their party or the profit of their friends. News outlets tell different truths about the coronavirus so that different people believe completely different stories about what's going on, which of course leads to division rather than to unity. For many, COVID-19 has become a political issue rather than a public health issue. And in the meantime, Far more people in the U.S. have died of COVID-19 than died on 9-11, more than died in Vietnam. And we have no idea what kinds of after effects this virus will have on the people who have had it and recovered. And people who've been out of work and businesses that have had to shut down don't have money with which to go forward. And they don't see things getting better. We are surrounded by division, distrust, death, and dread. Ruth Duck, who is a retired seminary professor and a hymn writer, has written a new hymn for this time called In Fear the World is Weeping. And we may sing this one of this week's, but I want to introduce it to you now. It begins like this. In fear the world is weeping and longs with every breath for life and hope and seeking new paths beyond this death. And then that first verse ends with a prayer over another of our primary fears. And loving hearts are risking their lives that we might thrive. Praise God for those who labor. Oh, may they stay alive. May they stay alive. Jesus, Jesus, where is our abundant life? Our life abundant. I was remembering as I was putting this sermon together that many decades ago when I was a graduate student working on a degree in English, I had a friend named Judy. And I have to say that Judy was kind of intense. And I came to understand that every day, Judy and her husband read the local Chapel Hill newspaper, the New York Times, and the Jerusalem Post. And every evening they watched the hour-long McNeil Lair report. Do you remember when it was an hour long? That, this was 40 years ago. Very frankly, Judy saw very little about the world that was good. Finally, one day after she had gone on and on about all the bad news, I said to her, Judy, the good news doesn't hit the papers. The good news is that your husband loves you. The good news is that I'm going to have a baby. There's plenty of good news, but it's mostly little stuff. It doesn't get to the, the news reports. And now 40 years later, there's still a lot of good news. A lot of it is still little stuff. My grandson is learning to crawl. That's good news. My son turned 40 yesterday to the acclaim of his family and friends. Good news. Someone's grandchildren are acting out plays in their living room. Somebody else is having a great time teaching their 15-year-old to drive. There's a really pretty tree outside my office window. Some people have learned to bake bread or fix their plumbing or plant a garden. A bunch of folks have been listening to our Facebook Live evening prayers to end their days or begin them. Life abundant often consists of little stuff. In Thursday evening's Bible study on Matthew, we talked about how the signs of the kingdom of heaven are often small and easy to miss. A mustard seed, a bit of yeast. And it's the same for life abundant, which is actually just another way of speaking of the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. And it's easy to miss the little stuff if we're not looking for it. Now, we also know that there is grief 
these days. Family members have died and there have been no funerals. We can't go hug each other in consolation. We can't visit people in the hospital. But there is also life abundant, which is what Jesus came to give us. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly, he said. The second verse of Ruth Duck's new hymn speaks to that abundant life and how much it depends on our relationships with each other and with God. Our lives are bound together in sorrow and in prayer, in life and death and nature. The Holy One gives air. The Holy One gives air. God breathes on us and through us. The Spirit is with us and within us so that we might have life and have it abundantly, not just as individuals, but as parts of the whole, all the folks we are bound together with. You know, when we don't understand about life abundant, we tend to see the world through a lens of scarcity, which tends to make us both miserly and miserable. Got to keep enough for myself. Got to make sure we'll have enough toilet paper and paper towels, maybe buy a few extra packages just in case. As long as I get what's due me, I don't really care what happens to anyone else. But when we see our lives as filled with God and with good things, it changes the way we interact with the world. When we know that we live not just in the kingdom of the world, but also in the kingdom of heaven, both at the same time, our attitudes shift to those that begin with abundance. We have been given abundant life, which means we can pass that abundance on. We can befriend strangers. We can work for justice for the least of these. We can give abundantly to our church so that together we can reach out to work with people all through the community. We can, as Ruth Duck put it, show wisdom, give care, and sing hope. Around the world, show wisdom with open hearts, give care. A new world calls us onward. Sing hope now everywhere. A new world calls us onward. God's world, God's kingdom, the realm of abundance. Later this week, you should receive a letter from the church's finance stewardship elders asking you to consider your giving for the coming year. Let us give abundantly. Let us pray abundantly. Let us live abundantly. Amen and amen. We will move on now to the prayers of the people with your prayer requests. So if you would unmute yourself and share a prayer request, that would be good. I know I got a text this morning from Jeff Jones that his sister-in-law, Beth, passed away this morning around 6 o'clock. So prayers for Judy, was her sister-in-law, uh, for Skip, her husband, and for the whole family. What other prayers would you like to lift this morning? Prayers for Sharon Young and their family as she continues to... Um, deteriorate it sounds like lord in your mercy our our prayer. Prayer. continued prayers for anthony lord in your mercy hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. Hear prayer. Prayer. prayer prayers of thanksgiving that jeff is with us again <coughs> lord in lord, your hear mercy our hear our prayers hear our prayers, prayers. prayers. Continued prayer for my mom. Um, she had another mini stroke the other day. And wasn't talking. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Yeah, try that one next. 
prayer for Marie Vogt. Lord, in your mercy. For Dennis, um, he has um, had some further issues. He is now taking uh, carbodopa, levodopa, um, because his other medication was no longer completely doing the trick. He's still hanging in strong. Mm -hmm. He cut the grass in the yard yesterday and did a bunch mm -hmm. of other stuff. So wow. thank God for that. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Amen. prayers Amen. and praise. I would like to have prayers for my granddaughter, Audrey, who is still in the hospital, Ohio State Hospital. She has lupus. Uh, they are now trying an anti-nausea um, chemotherapy drug on her. And uh, we're hoping that that will help. Mm. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Yeah. Let us pray. Gracious and almighty God, you who came to bring us abundant life, we give you thanks. We praise your name because you are the one who holds us together. You are the one who stretches our heartstrings from one to the next within our congregation and on beyond. For you live in us and speak through us and reach out through us, even in a time like this. We pray, O oh Lord, for all of the people who've been mentioned who need your support. The ones who are grieving and the ones who are suffering, the ones who are unsure of what's coming next the ones whose lives are slowly drawing to an end. Be with them, O Lord, breathe through them, lift them up, that they might still know life abundant. We pray for our world, we pray for our future, we pray for our country, and we turn them over to you, O oh Lord, that your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. All of this we pray in the name and spirit of Jesus the Christ. Amen. This is the time when I like to remind everyone, and you've been doing a beautiful job on this, to continue to send in your tithes and your offerings um, because the church is doing fine for now. Um, we, we did get a loan from the, or a, a, a grant, payroll grant loan from the government. Um, we're, we're looking good and, and we still crave your offerings so that we can do even more. I'd like us to move on now to our invitation to communion. Dennis is going to play uh, the <clears throat> Let Us Break Bread together. He'll play it through once. And I want you to be meditating on the words as he prays, as he plays. You don't need to sing them, but just to be meditating that this is an invitation to communion.
Thank you, Dennis. Teo, could you bring us to the next slide, please? The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. You watched over creation, God of patience, as it emerged out of nothingness. Meadows where sheep could rest, still pools of water teeming with tadpoles, paths worn smooth by mountain goats. You shaped us in your divine likeness, anointing us with spirit's breath of life so we could wander the garden by your side. But that thief, sin, and that bandit, death, climbed into Eden by another way, and we followed these strangers' voices. Day by day, you sent us prophets who challenged us to lead God-centered lives, but we devoted ourselves to lives that are empty and bitter. So then you sent us Jesus, shaped in human likeness, so we would know you are with us. With those who walk your paths, with those who long to find their way, we offer glad and generous hearts to you. Our holy gate of the way, and Jesus Christ, your child, is shepherd of life. He kept to the paths of righteousness so we might learn how to walk in his footsteps. Knowing our voices, he followed us to the gate of death, where the keeper let him in, locking the gate behind him. But you came another way, and knowing your voice, Jesus followed you out of the tomb, receiving life abundantly for all your children. As we gather in prayer and worship, as we seek to devote ourselves to following Jesus, we sing of that mystery known as faith. Everyone together, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. You lead us to this table where we want for nothing, for your spirit transforms everyday foods into a sacred feast. Your bread and cup comfort us, nourishing us so we might be together in everything with our sisters and brothers. The broken bread strengthens us to provide clean, still waters to all, to build shelter for those who sleep rough, to feed those who are hungry. Your grace overflows into us so we may offer companionship to those who wander shadowed valleys an open gate to those longing for a community, voices of compassion and hope to the oppressed. When we follow goodness and mercy to the end of time, we will find you coming out of the kitchen, setting dish upon dish of peace and hope on that great table prepared for all your children. And we will join our hearts and hands as we sing praise and wonder to you, God in community, holy in one. Amen. Let us say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We give you thanks that the Lord Jesus on the night before he died took bread and after giving thanks to you, he broke it 
and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink this, do so in remembrance of me. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. The bread of Christ given for you. The cup of salvation for all of you. Let us move on to our prayer after communion, which we will all pray in our own spaces. Loving God, we thank you that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet in your eternal kingdom. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now let us sing the final verse of Let Us Break Bread Together, and we will all sing this time while Dennis plays. And now go into your lives knowing that God has given you life abundant. Spend some time looking for those little things, those little signs of the kingdom. And as you reach out tenderly, carefully, full of care to the people whose lives seem so broken, May you spread that life abundance wherever you go. And know that God is with you, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, now and always. Amen.
Amen. Thank you, Dennis. Woohoo. Now consider that it is coffee hour. So get your cup and share what you have to say. Um, Tom, I forgot to have you read your thing during the prayers. Do you want to read that now? I don't, I don't have it available. You don't have it. Okay. Yeah, All right. yeah. you, okay. you can share it with us another time. Yeah. Good. I, to all um, of you on, watching on Facebook, we're all going to hopefully see you next Sunday. We're going to say farewell and uh, meet together now.